everyone, this is Gina. Today I thought I'd go to a classic little design, a little daisy chain design. Um, one of the girls at work went to Mexico for a couple weeks and came back and she was wearing a little tiny daisy chain. I thought, oh yeah, I remember daisy chain. And it was so cute and she's been wearing it every day. It's just adorable. So I thought that I would revisit daisy chain and remember how to do it. It took me a few tries to remember how to do it, but... I do remember how to do it now, and I decided it would be a cute beginner's tutorial. Here's what I made. I made one with um, turquoise and lavender center and um, nickel plate background, and then I made one with a bronze background and bronze center, and then just cream colored 11 O's. These are all 11 O seed beads. Very simple, very fun thing to do with all your little seed beads, and um, very cheap and fast and just just a really cute daisy chain everyone likes them they're just really cute little thing take this off this one I did with a toggle clasp and this one let me get it it's going to take me a second because this one is a lobster claw so give me a second my fingernails don't want to cooperate there we go and this one I made just a little bit longer because it isn't so much that the units, well, there's 20 units on this one and there's 19 on this one, but the clasping made the difference in length because my lobster claw is a little bit larger and my jump ring is larger and it's one unit longer. So I got a little bit more length off of this one. And so you can adjust the length with the number of units and with your type of clasping. So keep that in mind. And they just turn out really, really cute. Let's look at them close one more time and then look at our material list. And that's what they look like. Let's go ahead and see what it, it takes to make this project. Okay, for this project today, I will be using 8 pound fire line in the smoke color just because my, my beads are a little darker and I don't want my thread to show. And so I will be using 8 pound fire line. You can also use 6 pound fire line. You can use 8 or pound, 10 pound nano fill if you would like. And I will be using a size 10 beading needle. You will want to put on a full wingspan of your fire line or nano fill. <clears throat> wingspan is when you stretch your arms straight out to your sides. And then you measure your thread from the fingertip of the first arm, fingertips of the first arm, the length of your first arm, the length of your chest, the length of the second arm to your fingertips. That is a wingspan. And you'll want to thread that on to your needle. I'm using a size 10 beading needle. We will need three colors of 11 O seed beads if you want to do your pattern the same way I am. Of course, you can use more colors or less colors. It's good to at least have two colors though. In this particular sample, as you can see, I used just two colors. I used my background color in a antique bronze and I used the petal beads in the in a Toho cream opaque. And then I used a center bead also just in my background bead color. So you can do it that way, or you can do it like I'm going to do it today. I'm going to use a lavender Toho 11O for my center bead. I'm going to use a blue turquoise AB Toho for my petal beads, and I'm going to use a nickel plate 11O Toho for my background beads. So these are all Toho, they are all 11O seed beads. I will also be using two 8 seed beads in the nickel plate to do my clasping with. And my clasp will be this very small toggle clasp. It is a half inch wide on the circular part here. This is a very dainty stitch, so a big clasp will just look clunky with it. So a smaller clasp will be better. You can use a lobster claw, you can attach it the same way that I attached this, and a jump ring on the other end, a closed jump ring preferably, and just sew through it. You can use a spring ring, whatever you would like. But I'm going to use a small toggle. Now, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, to project. start this project, I'm going to pick up two 11 O's in my background color, which is my nickel plate, two of my petal beads, which is my turquoise color, and two of my background color beads. 
and I'm just going to bring this down to the end of my thread. Let's get you in closer here. So I have six beads and I don't have to leave a long tail. Just leave a few inches so you can hold on to and then go back through all four of the beads you just put on to your thread like so. Hold on to your beads and pull your needle through. When you get to about this size of your thread right here, then just kind of guide it in until it starts to form a circle like so. And then go back through all of your beads again. So I'm going to go back through two at a time. I'm going to go back through these two 11 O's here, maybe just a little closer here. And I'm going to hold on to my thread and I'm just going to pull. And when I tug it, it completes my circle. Then I'm going to go through the two turquoise beads. Actually go through them. There we go. Like so. And pull my thread through. Then I'm going to go through these two on this side of the nickel plate beads. And pull my needle through. Now what I've done is I've just kind of pushed my tail over the top and I'm coming out of these two beads right here. Now you want to pick up an 80 seed bead. So this are the two I'm coming out of. Pick up an 80 seed bead and then pick up the round end of your toggle or your lobster claw, whatever you're going to use, and bring it down to your work right here. Then you're going to go around the toggle and into the 80 and then into the other two nickel color beads here and pull. And this is what you should have. Now we need to secure this so we're going to sew through it two more times. So I'm coming out of the nickel plate, I'm going to go into the two petal beads my blue ones, and then I'm going to go up into the nickel and the 8 and into my toggle, just like so, and pull. Now this is a lot of thread, so just kind of pull it through slowly, go around your toggle, back through your 8 and back through the beads on the other side. like so. And this is what you should have. Let's do that one more time just to ensure that we have a nice strong clasping up through, so I went through the petal beads, up through the side beads, the nickel plate color, and up through the 80. Now it's kind of tight against my toggle now, so I'll just avoid my toggle, come through my 80, and then I'll come through my toggle. And avoid your tail here. I love when that guy gets in the way. There we go. Move him. And then I'm going to go through my toggle. and then back through the 80 and the nickel beads on the other side here. And that is what you should have. And now we will begin the actual stitch. So what we're going to do is I'm going to trim this tail off just so it stays out of my way. I'm leaving a little tag so I can burn it down later and make a little blob that will also help with retention of the stitch. Now I'm going to go into these two beads right here. Like so. 
So this is what we have now, and we're going to begin, begin the daisy chain. We are coming out of these two petal beads right here. We're going to pick up three more petal beads, which is my turquoise color, and then one center bead, which is my lavender color. I'm coming out of this bead right here on this side of the bead. I am going to go into this bead right here on the same side, so I'm going to go between the beads and I'm going to go in on the same side that I'm coming out of this bead. So basically just go between your beads and bring your needle through. And this is what you should have. Let's get a little closer. Now you will pick up two more of your petal beads, like so, and you'll go into the bead past your your center bead. So your center bead is right here. This is the first bead right past it. You'll go into it. Like so. Put your thumb and your fingers together and pull your thread through and then give it a slight tug. And you have your first flower. Now we're coming out of this bead right here. We're going to sew all the way around and come back to this bead just to secure the stitch and make it prettier. So I'm going to go through the first two 11 seed beads right next to where my thread is coming out. And then I'm going to go through the next two beads here. The first one where we attached our clasp is a little tight, but you can still get through it. Pull through those two, like so. And then turn it and go through the next two beads. Now we've gone through two beads at a time so that you can remember what bead we're going to start our next stitch in, and it will be the seventh bead. So two, four, six, and then seven. We're going to go into the seventh bead right here, and we're going to begin the next part of our stitch here. And this will be our background that will separate and begin the next flower. So we're going to pick up two background beads, which is my nickel color. Then I'm going to pick up one petal bead and one background bead. So I have four beads on my needle two background, one petal, one background. And then I'm going to go directly into the bead right next to the bead I'm coming out of on the inside here. So I'm coming out of this side of this bead, I'm going to go between the two beads and go into the same side on the bead right next to it, like so. And then I'm going to pull my beads down. And then I'm going to pick up two background beads, and then I'm going to pick up one petal bead, and I'm going to go into the petal bead I just put on. So I'm going to go directly into this bead here. I'm going to put my thumb and finger over them, guide my thread through nice and gently, and give a little tug. And this is what you should have. Now, we want to secure this simply because it's going to make it prettier and it's going to make it stronger. So we're coming out of these two petal beads. We're going to go up into these two background beads. Pull the thread through. Now you can skip this step, but I don't recommend it. It just looks better if you don't. Go through the two petal beads here. and then go through these two side beads. The only one we're not going to go through is that very center background bead. And now you're going to come up into these two petal beads right here. And we're ready to make another flower. So at this point we're going to pick up Sorry, that bead is bugging me. I don't know if I missed it or what. No, it's okay. Pick up three of your petal beads. One center bead, like so. And then 
go into the bead right next to the one you're coming out of. On the same side you're coming out of this bead. So I'm coming out of this side, I'm going to go to this bead and come out of this side also, or go into that side. And I'm going to pull these beads down. And they just look like kind of a blob at this point. Just pull them down, arrange them, and then pick up two petal beads. And then go into the bead right past your center bead. So your center bead is here. This is the bead right next to it. We're going to go into it. Put your fingers over it, hold it nice and tight, and just pull those up and through and give it a little tug. And you have your next flower. Now we're going to sew through all of these beads on the flower and then we will begin our next one. So we're going to sew through two at a time so we can remember where our seventh bead is. So go through two, then go through two more, then go through two more. So there's six beads that I've gone through. Now I'm going to go through my seventh. And here I can begin my background stitch. So I will pick up two of my background color, one of my petal beads and one of my background color, like so. I'm coming out of this bead here. I need to go into the next bead on the same side of that bead that I'm coming out of this bead. Go up between them and go through the same side and pull. Then you will pick up two background beads and one petal bead, like so. And then you're just going to come up through the petal bead you just added, right there and pull. Guide your thread through slowly and gently so you don't tangle it up and pull everything into line. And then let's secure this stitch. So we're coming out of the two petal beads, go into the two background beads right here and pull. Then go into the two petal beads. and then go into the two background beads here. Give it a little tug, make sure it's nice and neat, and then go into your two petal beads and exit and pull, like so. Let's begin another flower. Pick up three petal beads and a center bead, like so. Go into the next bead in the same side you're coming out of this bead. You're coming out here, go between the beads, go into the same side of this bead, <clears throat> and pull these beads down. Give a little tug, and then pick up two petal beads, like so, and go into the bead right on the other side of your center bead, right here. Now put your fingers over it or you'll pull the whole thing out of whack and then just guide your thread through and guide your beads down and give a tug and then that's what you end up with. Now we're going to sew again <clears throat> through the entire flower. So sew through two, sew through two more, sew through two more, and then come up through the seventh bead, right here. Let's do one more complete stitch before we move on and finish to length. So let's pick up two background beads. Let's pick up um, one petal bead and one background bead, like so and then go into the bead next to the one you're coming out of on the same side you're coming out. Coming out here, I'm going to go to this bead and go in here. 
and then I'm going to pull these beads down. Guide them down gently. Then pick up two background beads and one petal bead. Come up through the petal bead you just put on. So again, you can pull these all out of whack, so just go in gently, put your fingers over it, hold the beads, and guide your thread through. And then give a little tug. And that's what that should look like. Now we need to sew up through our background beads here. Sew up through these two. Come up through the two petal beads here. And then come up through these two here. and then into these two. I get my beads arranged. These two are being funny again. There we go. And I begin, I'm ready to begin my next petal beads. So I pick up three <clears throat> petal beads, a center bead, and then I go into the middle of the two beads here and pull my beads through or my thread through actually don't pull your beads through that might not be good then pick up two petal beads go into the bead behind the center bead right here again hold them and guide your thread through like so there's your flower Let's sew two beads at a time, so we're coming out of the seventh bead. We're going to go into two here, two here, two here, and then into the seventh bead. And we're just going to continue this. It's a completely repetitious stitch. You just keep doing the same thing until you get the length you want. Now, I have already put my clasp on one end, and if you're following me, of course, you should have yours on too. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this on my ruler, and I am going to center the toggle in the middle here, just like so, and then I will measure this until I am just short of the length I want. So I'm going to want to make a, a little over a seven inch bracelet. So I'll go to right about here to give room for my clasping on the other side. So just continue making your units till you get just shy of where you want your bracelet to end. So I'm gonna go here, my bracelet will probably end about here, maybe here. And that will be just a little over seven inches, which is great for me. Now, I will go to length and I will come back and tell you exactly how many units I have made if you want to make the same length that I have made. We'll be back in a moment and we'll continue from there. Okay, so as you can see, I have gone to length and I have made 19 flowers. So I'm just not counting the little background beads in between, just my flowers, one, two, three, and so on. And I've made 19 of them. And it's just a little over six and a half inches. So I am going to go ahead and put my clasping on this side. And, 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 that should be it. So I'm coming out of my seventh bead here just like I have all along after I've made my flower reinforced, come out the seventh bead, and then I am going to pick up two of my 11 0 background beads and one 8 0 and drop it down. And then I'm going to go through my clasp. And we're going to do this just like we did the other side, basically. And then I'm going to go back through. Let's get you a little closer. So I'm coming out of my clasp. I'm going to go back through the 8 0. And then I'm going to pull my thread through. And then I'm going to pick up two 11 0 seed beads. 
come here, you. Two eleven O's. And I'm going to go back into the bead next to the one that I'm coming out of. So I started in this one. I'm going to go to the opposite side here and go through two beads. And pull my 8 O's down. There we go. And then I will sew back through this and I will reinforce it. So go ahead and sew back through twice, just like we did on the other side. Go up to the 11 O's, the 8 O's, through your clasp, back down. And then we will tie a knot. So go ahead and reinforce this twice. Okay, so I have reinforced my clasping. And now I am coming out of the two 11 O's right here, the petal color beads. And I am going to just go between these two petal beads right here and grab the little thread bridge that's right in between the beads and make a loop. My thread is getting very short now, so I'm going to have to be pretty careful about the way I do this. And go through my loop and pull a knot down, like so. And then also through two more beads here. And I'll do the same thing here. And again, my thread is short, so it makes for a clumsy tie here, but... I did not have to add Fireline. I did my one nice wingspan and I didn't have to add it all so it a wingspan is good just make sure you get a full wingspan and you should be fine and then go through these two here and then I'm just going to cut off my thread since it's so short you can continue sewing around and tying knots if you'd like and I'm going to go ahead and cut it and just leave a small tag of course, I had to get my dull scissors out again. You'd think I would learn, but I never do. And because that is so short, I think I will get my thread zapper. See if I can find it. And melt it in. So, since that was so tiny and my um, I'll do it that way. And then on this side, I'll just take my lighter and burn my tail down on this side that I left. Tug it in. And this is what I have. So, I will put it on my wrist and let you see what it looks like. They're such cute little things. Let's see, come here, clasp. Okay. And there's my bracelet. Cute little thing. I could even maybe get one more unit. I, uh, this is probably right at 7 inches, or maybe even not quite. Let me see. Let's measure it. I could have gone maybe even one more just to have a little bit more movement. It's not tight, but it doesn't move around a lot. So let's see. It's at 7 inches, a little under actually, because it's probably right about there if you measure it from the middle. So it's close to seven inches. My wrist is six and a half inches, so it fits. It just doesn't have a lot of room. And then I made this one, and this one I used a lobster claw, a bigger one, and a small, and not a small, but um, like an eight millimeter in diameter jump ring on this side. And this was a little too big for me. So let me see if I can get it on, and I'll show you. So I went ahead and tried to adjust that on my other. After you make one or two, you'll know exactly what you like for length. But this one, it, it, it works. It's just a little bit big, not terrible. And that's what it looks like with a lobster claw on it. Get it closer so you can see it. And this one with the toggle. 
And these would be really cute to wear together. So you could make a bunch of different ones in all different colors. You could make each flower a different color. You could do um, a blue and then a purple and then a blue and a purple. Or you could switch the colors out. Like this one I could have done with the blue petal beads, the lavender center, and then done the lavender petal beads in a blue center. And just did that every other bead. Um, every other flower. I mean, there's so many different combinations you can do. Daisy Chain is cute. It's a classic, and it's fun to play with. And I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. See you later. Bye-bye.